All right, everybody, welcome back to the Conserving Freedom Network. We have a gear review today. We are going to be taking a look at the Hollow Sun HS407K. Now, we will be going to the Freedom Compound and taking a look at some of the more in depth features, why I chose it. Obviously, we'll do some shooting with it. Um, just to give you a quick rundown as we zoom in on some of the close up features that I don't hit during the unboxing section, which is next. Uh, just going to go over a couple things here. Uh, it does have the um, adjustability right on the sides. You have 10 brightness settings and two night vision settings. Uh, that's going to be right on the left hand side of the red dot, um, as well as some built in iron sights that are attached to it. Um, just in case you don't have those suppressor height sights, and especially on something like the uh, SIG P365X that uh, you lose your sights with it. It does have just a little bit of a notching uh, there as well. 6 MOA dot, again, we will say all of that when we do the unboxing, um, but just wanted to give you a quick overview. Um, it does have the uh, windage and elevation uh, adjustability on the optic as well, which is pretty easy to hit with just a coin um, or the little screw that they give you. Um, so really nice red dot. Let's take a look at it during the unboxing. We'll do some close-ups and then we'll do some shooting of it. All right, so as promised, we are taking a look at what comes in the box of the Holosun HS407K. Uh, slides right out of the nice little dressing there. Uh, this will be a, a true unboxing. Honestly, have not opened this um, at all. So first time's going to be on camera. Um, obviously, you'll be watching this looking back on it. I'll have already had this attached and everything, but uh, a little bit in reverse here. So owner's manual, that is all good. Uh, let's see, a little wiping cloth, all good. Gel tablet, whatever. And have the key maybe to get to the battery. Not sure. We'll figure that out later. I think most important part is the optic itself. Uh, we can see first impressions here. It's not 100% clear. You can see the lens is a little blue, um, but just going over some of the features here, um, I got the, so the 407, uh, 407K uh, is the 6 MOA dot. I know the 507K has the ability uh, to have that setting with the 32 MOA ring. This is just a 6 MOA dot. Very quickly, why I chose this over the 507. 507 on Optics Planet was coming in at like 299. This was coming in at like 229. Uh, so for 60 bucks, why did I save the 60 bucks? Um, I really, I thought at first I wanted the 32 MOA ring because I was like, oh, a 6 MOA dot is just so big. Um, you know, the 32 MOA ring, I'd be able to, you know, maybe acquire the target a little quicker. If I'm close, I'm close. If I see the ring, you know, I know I'm in the vicinity, even if my optic isn't mounted perfectly. But if I'm going to go with that logic, why not just get a 6 MOA dot? Um, you know, I don't think that's going to be any clunkier or bigger on screen than the uh, 507K. So I'm happy with the 407K. So it is that... Um, it is that uh, 6 MOA dot. The battery slot, which is really awesome, is right here on the side. So once this thing is mounted, it is on there good and flush. So uh, I think we'll keep it that simple. That was just the little bit of the unboxing. Uh, the next close-up we do is going to be this on my everyday carry. And believe me, installation is a breeze. Um, I'll talk you through any hang-ups if I had them there. But next close-up is going to be fully installed on the gun. So I will do a little voicing over here as we're looking at some of my first shots with it. Um, you'll hear this again in my final thoughts after some of these shooting clips, um, but did uh, think it was important to do a little voicing over here as I'm shooting. So a couple of things that were happening, uh, as you can see, as I'm drawing, not really going for a ton of speed, but you'll notice I'm definitely fishing for the red dot a little bit. Again, these are some of my first shots ever, I mean, we'll touch this in those final thoughts coming up. Um, I just wasn't bringing the gun high enough. Um, 
with my M18, kind of my duty gun, you can see on this one, I, I definitely brought it up a little more and I felt more confident to take a few more shots where they did a string of, th uh, string of three there. Um, but you can just see, you know, it needs to just come up a little more. Um, it's a smaller framed, obviously red dot. You know, the, the pistol is obviously smaller. So everything sits a little lower um, in my shooting. So it took me a good bit to get used to it. Um, but once I did it, it, it really was starting to get there for me. So enjoy some of those shooting clips uh, and then we'll, we'll head into my final thoughts. All right, so what are my final first impressions, I guess? Uh, I haven't spent much time with this red dot, um, but definitely wanted to summarize a couple of things that I found after shooting it at the range session. You just watched me shoot a couple. Uh, we did the unboxing, so kind of some final thoughts here. Now, um, we will take a look at it here. I will make sure we are clear and safe for everybody uh, out there. Obviously, you want to be safe. Clear and safe. So, some of my final thoughts, and I think, you know, first impressions, final thought, first impressions, whatever, my first session with it at the range. I think maybe the first kind of most noticeable thing is it's it's harder to acquire, I think, just because it's smaller. Uh, my full-size SIG, as you've all seen on the channel, my M18 with the Leopold Delta Point Pro, I've gotten very proficient at finding that dot pretty quickly. Um, this one you certainly can, uh, but I just have a tendency for it to be a little high. Um, and I just, I need to remind myself, you know, to really drive this out flat and I will be able to find it, but I'm kind of consistently high. Now, what I think happens is I, I drive it a little low. So it's a smaller gun, the P365X. I think I drive it sort of underneath my eye line. And if I just trusted that I got it all the way up to my eye line, I'd find it, which is, is kind of what I was discovering on the range is that, you know, I would kind of bring it a little too low then have to dip my head and find it. Again, it's all about making sure that it's, it, you know, it's a smaller frame than most red. I mean, it's, it's tiny. So this has to really get up to my eye level, nice and flat, and then I can find it pretty consistently. So from the, from the draw, it's just got to get kind of flat, and then I will find it, if that makes any sense, kind of higher and flatter. I think you will have a tendency to lose the dot high uh, early on. Um, you know, other than that, I, I think it's great. It's, it's totally bright. Um, the, the 10 settings, I mean, I shot in the clear, clear daylight, um, and it was it was totally fine. So uh, the 6 MOA dot was not too big for my target. It didn't cover an, you know, an absurd amount of, of target. Um, I thought it was still pretty crisp for it being a 6 MOA dot. I mean, even right now, it's really crisp, um, and I am able to find it pretty consistently. So will it take some reps to get used to it? Absolutely. Um, but I think once I do get consistent with drawing it, um, it is going to be a really great red dot. I mean, it's, uh, it also just looks very beautiful. You know, adjusting it was easy enough, um, you know, with your windage and elevation. Um, that was a breeze. I think I sighted this in in like 10 shots. Um, the bluing of the, of the lens, I didn't really notice. Like, this is a great, uh, great, great, great kind of subcompact, micro, micro compact uh, red dot. Would really recommend this. It installed on my SIG um, in like two minutes. I mean, I'm not even kidding you. I unscrewed, unlike the P320s and the M18s where you had to almost take apart the entire striker system to get to the base plate, these two screws were right there, fully exposed, got them out no problem. Uh, the plate slid right off and, and this popped right on easy enough. So a uh, big fan of this. I definitely have to work on my draw. I consistently don't want to get, I consistently want to get this high. Those were better. Um, yeah, I just need, I need some practice with it, but loved it. Uh, please let me know what y'all think. If you're, if you're on the fence between this and the 507, um, I don't think it really matters. I think you can save the 60, 70 bucks, buy some ammo or something else because the 407 is really everything you need. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this review and we will see you next time on the Conserving Freedom Network.